Okay, <laughs> hello dear friends, good evening, such a beautiful, beautiful evening. So I will continue to read this beautiful book, The Adventures of Odysseus. And uh, I find it quite uh, interesting and uh, it helped me to improve me, so... <laughs> It's very worthy. And, uh, oh, sorry for your time. Mm. Okay, let's uh, start. The Land of the Dead. Home is what a ghoul cries for over rough water. There is nothing worse for mortal men than wandering. How many more storms before my ship could lower it, its sail? I was haunted by memories of home. Oh, I am homesick. The long shadows of the afternoon stretching down the terrace and vineyard that laddered that ladder every slope, the scent of herbs on the breeze, the tongue of my dog against my palm, great Mount Neriton, great Mount Neriton, the rocks, the gold tracks, the sandy beaches, a wife without a husband and a country without a king. These things compelled me to walk among the ghosts of the dead. I so miss home, if not for my beautiful home, for my beautiful family. I would not have to go to the underworld to go with the ghosts of the dead. Circe gave us provisions and blankets. We soon discovered their purpose. The, fur the further north we sail, the colder it becomes. One morning, when we woke, we could see our breath curling from our lips and our nostrils in a shiver, in a silver mist. A few days later, we saw shards of ice hanging from the mast and the rigging. When we found ourselves approaching a wall of fog that rose from the sea to the sky, I could not tell you for how long we sailed once we passed inside that fog. Day and night had no meaning. There was only an endless, calm gloom. The prow of the ship hit a sandbank. I and two of my companions took a pair of sharp of sheep ashore. We set off. The further we walked, the more uneasy we felt. Everything was infected with the grayness of the mist. It's all foggy and it just does not feel right. <clears throat> All color bled from our clothes and our skin. My companions became shifting forms in the fog beside me. My thoughts, too, became gray, sluggish, stupid, lumpen, Every doubt and regret 
I have ever felt crowded in my mind, each with its own persuasive voice. All my old wounds ached. Every step took a little more effort. It was as if we were wading against the current of an ocean we couldn't see. So they were walking on the island and it was misty, foggy, gray. They could not see anything because they are going to the enter world. <clears throat> we reached the banks, the banks of a broad, oily river. river. It was the river of forgetfulness. On the other side, hidden from view by the fog, was the realm of many guests, the land of the dead. I scooped a hole in the sand at my feet. I scooped a hole of sand. A hole in the sand at my feet. We lifted the heads of the sheep and slit their throats. Oh, poor sheep. Their dark blood flowed, flowed into the hole in the sand. Shapes formed in the fog. We heard a mourning a hissing. The ghosts of the dead were coming, surmounted by our sacrifice. We saw young brides, warriors with gaping gashes, gurgling children. The sight of them made my seasoned soldiers shake with horror. Most of the spirits of the dead have lost all memory of their previous lives. They are stupid, hungry wreaths until they can drink the blood of a mortal sacrifice. They long to remember their lives. <gasps> Our blood offering was for one of the few who had kept his mind, the blind prophet Teresia. Though I had instructed my companions to hold back the ghosts, the flickering host, until Teresias has drunk his fill, we could not. We, they could do nothing but stand and shake and gape. It was as though they had fallen into some kind of trance. It was left to me to draw my sword and keep the dead at bay. One of the riff, one of the riff was as insubstantial was as insubstantial as all others but he had a dignity a purpose that the others lacked surely this was Teresia surely this was Teresia I guided him with the sound of my voice towards the pool. He cupped his hands and drank. His white eyes twitched in their sockets. What can you see? I asked. 
you are Odysseus. You seek a way back to rocky Isaka, but it will be hard for you. Poseidon, 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 Poseidon longs to re- to avenge the mutilation of his son Polyphemus. There is only one way that you will see the lights of home again. You must learn humility. You must rise in your desires and those of your crew. During your voyage, you will approach an island that will seem to you the perfect place to land. You will see cattle gazing, no sign of human life. You will want to stop and feast on their flesh. But Odysseus, be warned, this herd is the prized possession of the sun god Hyperion. If he were to see you harm them, and he is the sun god, he sees all. He won't go to Zeus and demand re- he would go to Zeus and demand revenge. The Cyclops curse would pursue you relentlessly. If ever you reached your homeland, it would be alone and unknown and under a strange sail, and there would be danger waiting where there should be a welcome. So it was a quite a gloomy future. You will never be going back home, and even if uh, uh, you go back home, you will land in a in an island and uh, and there will be, you will see cattle, but you will never hurt the cattle because they were the cattle of the sun god Hyperion. Maybe it's Apollo in another name. Anyway, um, and even if you reach your homeland, there will be danger. There will be no welcome but danger waiting for you. If you can overcome this danger, there is another journey you must take. You must put an oar on your shoulder and walk inland, leaving behind leaving behind everyone, everything, everywhere you know. At last, you will reach a crossroad. There is a man. There is a man will stop you and gaze in wonder at all. He will ask you what it is, whether it is some kind of a winnowing fan for separating the grain. There is a place where they do not know, where they do not know what an ore is because they do not know what the sea is. This is a place where you truly are nobody. In this place, you must plant the blade of the oar in the ground so that the shaft rises up towards the sky. Make a sacrifice to great Poseidon of a ram, a bull, and a feeding boa. Then you will have made Then you will have made your peace with him. If you can do all these things, your death 
will come to you in old age from the sea in the veils of sleep like a long-awaited friend. Wow. What a prophecy. He will die of old age from the sea in sleep. This vision I have seen. This vision I have seen. It has come to me through a gate of horn. As the sightless seer spoke, more and more of a flickering host gathered around the pool. I saw a sight. Then I saw a sight then that stuck me with such a shock of sorrow that I stumbled back and fell into the pool of blood. I turned and ran, screaming. My two companions followed me, not knowing why they were running. Soon we were back on the ship and out of the open sea. My companions never asked me what had put me to fight. I never told them that I had seen among the dead the face of my mother. I had been away so long that if I ever reached my homeland, she would not be there. I would never again feel her warm embrace. Odysseus has left his home for so long he would never see his mother again.